would you do to inspire companies to relocate to Boston, but then what, what would you also do to keep the companies that are here, here? Great question. Uh, the first thing we're doing, I made an announcement the other day that I'm going to change the BRA, change the, 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 the structure of the BRA. The, the Globe said I was going to blow up the BRA. I didn't necessarily say I was going to blow the BRA up. What I'm going to do is merge the BRA, take EDIC, move it into the BRA, and look at possibly taking the... Uh, um, DHCD and put into the BRA. And when we do that, we're going to see how we can how we can be more effective. A component of the BRA on the campaign trail, everyone's been talking about separating plan, planning from development. Two different agencies. That's a problem. You, you've got to keep them together so that the planning is first, the development follows afterwards. And one thing that we don't do a great job of is, is promoting business development. When I, what I mean by that is the mayor has done a fabulous job in attracting business like Vertec Pharmaceutical to Boston and the Innovation District. He's done a tre tremendous job there. What I'm talking about is creating another opportunity so companies, we know that there are companies that want to come into our city so we can put some of those companies in our neighborhood spots. You know, in, in every neighborhood has a Verizon building or a, formerly a telephone building or, or an Edison building. A lot of those buildings sit empty. They used to provide um, jobs for folks, middle income jobs for folks. We need to see if we can attract businesses into those neighborhoods, into those buildings, so they can provide again jobs for folks. So I, I want to create this, this economic development uh, business plan in, within the BRA. As far as keeping business here, you know, Verizon is talking about moving out of Boston. They have 500 call center jobs in downtown Boston. Uh, one of the first calls I will make is to Verizon asking them not to leave Boston, to relocate into one of our neighborhoods. There are plenty of neighborhoods, there are plenty of opportunities in different neighborhoods, whether it's High Park or Dorchester or Mattapan or, you know, different places that we have in the city that we might have spaces for them to go. Uh, we don't want to lose those jobs. We lost Fidelity or lost a lot of Fidelity. You know, we kept Liberty Mutual. We shouldn't be losing jobs to other places. I mean, Boston is, is a place that people want to be and want to work, and, and we should take advantage of that. So when I was a kid growing up in New York City, we had your academic high schools, but you also had vocational high schools. Yep. And a lot of those folks that came out of the, the voc ed uh, track went into carpentry and plumbing, landscaping, custodial maintenance, so yep. on and so forth. Where do you come down on uh, getting people into the trades, getting people to really go to school for vocational education if, in fact, their intent is not to go to college but to graduate from school and get a good well-paying job. No, I agree with you, and I said a little earlier, I want to bring Votech schools back to every school in Boston, not just Madison Park. I think, you know, the discussion is around Madison Park. I think we've had three or four plans now over the last five years what to do at Madison Park, and there's a new one that just came out to partner with Roxbury Community College, of which I support, and I will make sure that that, that continues to happen. But I think we have to make other opportunities. We have to give a reason for kids to stay in school. They're dropping out, and by simply filing legislation to raise the dropout age to 18 isn't going to work. Because you have kids that aren't going to, if, if they're not learning at 14, they're certainly not going to stay in school till 18 because they don't want to be there. So we have to look at how do we bring Votech schools back. Also, I want to bring some of these high-tech jobs that are coming to Boston and that are in Cambridge, quite honestly. I want to partner with these companies to bring them into the school, too, so we can train kids in high-tech, in, in, in Votech, and also in hospitality, so that the kids that are in school today will have a reason to stay. So when they graduate, they will have an opportunity to get a job. You know, school is every... Every high school student's not geared towards college immediately. I mean, I'm a person that graduated BC in 2009. Actually, I think you went to school. I did went to BC. later That's in life right. as well. That's right. So, I mean, so eventually, hopefully, they, they will understand the, the importance of getting that education. But we have to train them and prepare them for a, a life out in the workforce. So they're not hanging around. They're not getting into trouble. So there's more opportunities for them. And that's something that we can do, and that's something that my campaign has spoken about. They used to be in, the, in schools here in Boston. Mm -hmm. We used to have, and every school was associated with a different trade. Uh, and also, I'm familiar with this because I created a program in the building trades called Building Pathways, uh, which gave people of color and women an opportunity to get into building trades. Proud to say we graduated 55 people in 18 months. Uh, there's another class going on right now. I'm no longer at the building trades, but the program's moving. And what happens is, you know, these young people get into the trades, and they get into the union, and they get a job. And it's happened, and they're able to raise a family and do all of the great things in their life. And it was successful there, so I'd like to take that model and grow it in our high schools and make it a bigger model so we give more opportunities for young people. Talk to me about low-income housing. You see all of these developments that are going up in Boston and now that it's spreading up Blue Hill Avenue, yep. but a lot of these uh, units that are coming online are pretty pricey. What would you do uh, in the uh, around the discussion of keeping folks in the city uh, in affordable housing? Yeah, part of that discussion is going to come up with my reorganizing of the BRA 
and, and, and looking at how we can, with D&D, actually I mis misspoke, it was D&D I was looking to put in there, mm -hmm. and, and how we can build... The Department of Neighborhood yeah, Development. How we can build more housing mm -hmm. and, and look at it as a, as a master plan as far as all neighborhoods. I think we have a problem in Boston, not only with, with low-income housing, but we have an issue with workforce housing. Because we're losing people because they can't afford to buy homes in neighborhoods and they can't afford to get apartments. Uh, when you look around the city of Boston right now, the average apartment rent is great for the landlord. It's, you know, 2000 3000 a month. That's great for the landlord. It might be, the neighborhood might think it's okay, but we're losing families. What I want to do is, man, I want to stop losing families. I want to keep the families in the city of Boston. You know, and I think that that's important to really take a, take a good look at this. We're looking at these micro units now they're talking about. And, you know, in the beginning of the campaign, the micro unit was kind of a hot discussion. Uh, we're building 192 units, or, or there's being 192 buildings, uh, units being built now. That's not going to solve the problem. The way we solve the problem of housing is by increasing the supply. We need to increase the supply, and I think that that's important. Also, we can't look, look away. We have to look at our colleges and universities, and I think it's important to try and get as much of their residential housing on campus. And, and you know, I know BC has a plan, uh, BU is talking about some stuff, Northeastern is talking about some stuff. We need to get those kids back on campus because when they go off campus, the rents that, that these landlords are charging them and taking advantage in some cases of these young people, it's, uh, it's through, the, through the roof. So I also want to look at the smaller colleges and allow them to enter into an agreement with a private developer to build housing, which right now isn't really allowed in the city of Boston, but I have no problem with it with a college partnering with a private developer to build housing for their college. And all the rules and regulation of that college will be put in that, in that, in that apartment. So it's not like these young people are going to be living uh, off campus with no supervision. The school will be the supervision. And, and it, just like it is on an on-campus opportunity now in Boston. I've got about four minutes left. I have two questions for you. The first is, talk to me about the arts and culture in the city. And it's a vibrant uh, environment here when you talk about Big cultural time. and artistic uh, um, forays. Where do you come down on the arts? The arts is very important. And I had a meeting the other day uh, with a lot of people who are active in the arts community. And, and basically they asked me the question, where do I stand on the arts? And, and I said, I'm going to need your help to help me create what we want to do in Boston. Um, 20 years ago, the arts commissioner was a cabinet level position in Boston. And I've proposed under my administration that the arts commissioner will be a cabinet level position once again. And when you look at the arts, you can look at it as, as a, it's just a, it's, it's, it's not one size kind of fits all approach. You know, we don't have arts and culture necessarily in our schools anymore. Uh, that's a big, big, something that's really missing. Uh, we don't have the opportunity in our neighborhoods. We have a lot of great art groups in our neighborhoods that do a lot of great work. We need to do more with them, allow them uh, the opportunity to express themselves. Uh, the artist housing that was in Boston. There's really not much artist housing. Uh, one of my components in my housing plan is to deal with more, create more artist housing so folks can, can live and work in the communities. You know, they used to be on the South Boston waterfront area, uh, and, and they lost all that, that space because of development, and it's been, they've been developing that area now for four or five years. And we really haven't replaced their housing. Uh, and we don't want to lose that talent out of the city. We also have unbelievable institutions here, Museum of Science, Children's Museum, MFA. Uh, we have all these great institutions here that, 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 that promote our city. Uh, we have the theaters here in the city. I mean, we, we wanna I want to bring in more festivals into Boston, the book festival. You know, we nearly, we nearly lost First Night. Uh, we can't lose things like First Night. We need to make sure that, that, that programs like that stay in the city of Boston. You know, in my district, my kickoff was at the Strand Theater. You know, we've invested money into the Strand Theater, the city of Boston. Uh, we're not there yet, but we need to continue to invest. We can't lose the Strand Theater. We need to promote it. And, and I think if, you know, we want to be a world-class city, I think arts and culture is part of us promoting the city. And I know that the artists will get mad at me, or the, the community, but tourism also. We need to promote more on tourism. You know, we have, we have a place where a lot of international people come in to visit our city. They walk through our city. We need to make sure that we, when we get them here, that, that there's something for them to see and walk around and promote our city more. Last question. What I want you to do is to look in that camera over there and tell the folks at home or wherever they may be watching why they should seriously consider giving you their vote to be the next mayor of the city of Boston. Right, thank you. I want to thank Sheriff Tompkins for the opportunity to be here tonight. I also want to ask the voters out there to please consider, I'm actually ask you for your vote for mayor. Uh, you can find my policies on MartyWalsh.org. 
But I have a 16-year legislative career on Beacon Hill. I voted on the tough issues. I've worked on putting budgets together. In good times, I voted to reduce taxes. In tough times, I voted to pay, raise taxes. Unfortunately, I probably shouldn't be saying that on TV today, but I'm going to say it because I've had the I've had to make the decisions of what programs to cut, what programs to fund. That's a major part in this election. How we're going to put our budgets together. I voted on education reform up on Beacon Hill. It's something that other candidates haven't done. I've taken tough positions on different issues. I voted in, in certain cases, one of my proudest votes is on gay marriage, voting for gay marriage to, to protect marriage equality here in this, in this city. I also want to protect all people's rights in the city of Boston. So I ask for your vote, your consideration on September 24th, and hope that the voters of Boston will see and put me as one of the two to go on to the final in November. Thank you. Thanks so very much Thank for coming you, on. Really appreciate it. We know that you've got forums night after night after the night, <laughs> sometimes two or three in the day. So yeah. keep eating right, keep drinking a lot of water, and just stay strong. And as we go forward, love to have you back to continue to talk well, about Well, I'm hoping to be today. back here after September 24th. Cool. And not as the rep. <laughs> right. Well, we look forward to seeing you back here. All right. Thank okay. you, my friend. All right, folks, look, we're going to go to a break. And on the other side, we've got Boston City Councilor John Connolly here. And he's going to talk to you and he's going to talk to us about why we should consider giving him our vote, your vote, to be the next mayor of Boston. Please do stay tuned.